Hello friends, welcome to Limitless Life. I'm your host, Larry Hutton, and once again, it just blesses me. I'm so honored to be able to stand before you and, and just share the word of life, the word of God with you, to show you that God is a good God, that Jesus is the only way to heaven, but that's a good thing because His way is easy, His burden is light, He wants you healthy in your body, He wants you wealthy in your finances, He wants you full of peace and joy rather than being an emotional wreck. He wants you to have a heavenly marriage. I'm telling you, Jesus is a good Lord. And uh, I'm just thrilled to be able to share uh, with you on a daily program just uh, how good he is and let people know. And I've been noticing as I've been watching some of our social media, I've been watching a lot of different people sharing the program. So if you happen to see us put this on YouTube or put it on our website or put it on any of the social media, uh, you can share it. And then, of course, we're on gospeltruth.tv, so you can share that as well. So. Uh, it's just great to be back with you again today. We've actually been doing a series. I titled the series, There is Power in Your Mouth. This is actually our eighth program that we're doing on that series. I, I think I'll have a couple more to go yet. Um, but we're talking about basically the scripture found in Proverbs. So if you want to turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, we'll go back there and read that again. We've been reading it each program. But in Proverbs 18, 21, God makes this astounding statement, death and life are in the power of the tongue. He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So it shows us the tongue has power. And we found out that power, that Hebrew word power, actually it means hand. So it lets us know that the power that's released by using our tongue to form words and speak out of our mouth the power that's released hands us things. And that's the main definition of the Hebrew word, hand. Uh, so when you and I speak, we are either handing ourselves a good tomorrow or we are handing ourselves a bad one. And we don't want to hand ourselves bad things. Uh, so many people think it's just up to the sovereignty of God. Well, whatever God wants is going to happen. That's just not true. We've already been seeing that. We'll be seeing that some more as we uh, look in the Word of God here the next couple programs. Uh, we have to um, cooperate with God if we want His program to come to pass, if we want His plans, if we want uh, to pursue what He has for us in life, then we have to make sure that we're believing and acting. Listen, if things happen just because God's wanted it, in other words, it was God's will, then everybody would be saved right now. We'd are, we could just start the millennium right now. <laughs> we could just go ahead and have the new heaven and new earth, get our glorified bodies. If everybody is just saved because God wants it, I mean, the scripture said God wills that all men be saved. S scripture said God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Scripture said, God so loved the world that whosoever believed in Jesus would not perish but have everlasting life. So we know it's God's will, but again, we have to yield, accept, use our faith to receive saving grace, uh, which is the will of God. So Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now we tied that over into uh, 1 Peter 3, 10 that says, He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. So that's 1 Peter 3.10. We've looked at that. Uh, we were discussing what God calls evil words because it says if you want to really love your life, if you want to really enjoy yourself, have fun, be a happy camper, so to speak, uh, really just, you know, live the dream life, then he says you have to refrain your tongue from evil. So we were looking uh, what the word evil means in relation to Scripture. We let Scripture interpret Scripture. That's the best way to rightly divide the Bible and not get messed up. And so we ended up in Numbers chapter 13. If you remember in Numbers chapter 13, God had told Moses to go search the land, which I give you, uh, and just check it out. And he never told him to go see if they were strong enough or smart enough to earn it or, or take it. No, he just said, go search the land that I'm giving you. I'm giving this to the children of Israel. And uh, so they go in. And of course, if you remember there in Numbers 13, uh, what is it? The 32nd verse that says they brought up an evil report. And so we found out that word evil in the Hebrew actually means slander. 
And if you remember slander, I gave you the de definition of slander, slander, the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. Interesting, a, a, um, an action or a crime of making a false spoken statement. So that's what he said that those 10 spies, when they brought back a report that uh, there's giants in the land, the cities are walled and very great, and the giants are there, we just, there's no way that, there's, that we could take the land because they're stronger than we are, and just, we're little grasshoppers in their sight, and we're grasshoppers in our own sight. They gave all these uh, reports, and God said that's evil. That's slanderous. You're making a false spoken statement. Wow. So it's a crime. Remember the word slander, an action or crime of making a false spoken statement. So uh, remember we pointed out that what they said when they were reporting the giants and reporting the walled cities and reporting everything they reported, God called it a slanderous report, an evil report, a bad report because it went against his word. But remember they were just reporting the facts. So that's where we got to be careful because a lot of people think, well, the truth is, and they'll tell you the facts or they'll tell you reality. They won't tell you what God said. See, what God said is true. That's, what, that's what's truth. All truth is established on it is written. What did God say? And so um, you got to make sure you're not believing something because it's factual or because it's reality, because it's real in the natural realm. See, those giants were real. And so when uh, the, the 10 spies gave the report, they're stronger than we are, da 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 you know, all the report they gave, they were reporting the facts. They thought it was the truth. I'm sure, I, well, let me just tell you the truth. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that when they reported those facts and that reality, that they thought they were just telling the truth. And that's where a lot of people miss it. They, that's why their faith doesn't work because they speak facts and they speak reality that is contrary to the Word of God. And I'm going to show you another one today. This is, this is an eye opener right here. If you want to go to Luke chapter 1 verse 5, we're going to see how important our words are and how powerful our words are and how they can actually alter the very course of our lives. Uh, so let's go to Luke chapter 1 and uh, verse number 5 for, to start with. It says there, uh, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife uh, was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So this is talking about uh, John the Baptist's parents, right? Zacharias and Elizabeth. Well, let's skip down to verse 11 for time's sake. There appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar. He's a priest, remember, so he's in uh, doing his priestly duties. And it said, there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when, when Zacharias saw him in verse 12, he was fearful. He, he got troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said in verse 13, don't fear, Zacharias, for your prayers heard. I'm going to tell you why you don't have to fear. Your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son. You're going to call his name John. And you shall have joy and gladness, and many are going to rejoice at his birth. Well, verse 15, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. The angel goes on to explain to, Je to Zacharias. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. He's going to drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn, shall he turn to the Lord their God. Verse 17, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said, now look at verse 18, Zacharias said to the angel, whereby shall I know this? How do I know you're telling me the truth? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Now let's just stop right there for a minute. I want you, I want you to see what happens from verse 11. Verse 11, there appears Zacharias, uh, to Zacharias, this angel, and um, Zacharias was in fear, so the angel spoke and said, Zacharias, your prayer's heard. Your wife Elizabeth's going to bear you a son. You're going to call his name John. You're going to have great joy and gladness, and many are going to rejoice at his birth. 
Now, let me, let me ask you a question. If you were praying about something like, like Zacharias, let's say you were praying to have a baby and, and God sent an angel from his presence in heaven to appear to you like here. And the, and the angel spoke and said, God heard your prayer and uh, he is going to grant your request. You're going to have what you've been praying for. You're going to have the child if that's what you were praying for. Now, let me ask you this. Wouldn't you be thrilled? <laughs> yeah, hello. Wow, man, I prayed and God actually sent an angel from heaven and appeared to me and told me my prayer was heard and he's granting my request. He's going to answer my prayer. Whew, yeah, I would think uh, my response would be joyful, happy, thrilled, blessed, you know, whatever word you want to use. Well, let's look at Zacharias's response. Verse, verse 18, Zacharias said to the angel, whereby, I'm going to read the King James or New King James, where, whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife well stricken in years. In other words, um, how do I know you're telling me the truth? Don't you know that I'm really old and so is my wife? That's what he said. Does that sound like he was believing what God said? Well, let me, let me read a couple other translations here so you can see what I'm saying is, is what he was saying too. Uh, contemporary English, uh, he said, how will I know this is going to happen? In other words, he's in doubt. God's word of the nation says, what proof is there for this? In other words, just because you're telling me God said this, what proof do you have? And then the New Living Translation said, how can I be sure that what you're telling me is going to happen? In other words, I'm not believing you. And the message translation, do you expect me to believe this? <laughs> I'm an old man and my wife's an old woman. The message translation, that's cute. Do you, ex but really this is what he's saying. Do you expect me to believe this? He's telling the angel that's giving him a word from God. Do you expect me to believe this? Now, you know, it's one thing to have uh, unbelief come, you know, into your thought realm, into your mind. But it's another dimension entirely when you hook your tongue up with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Remember, your tongue is going to hand you your future. So look what the angel said in the next two verses. Verse 19, the angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God and am sent to speak to you and to show you these glad tidings. In other words, this should have made you glad. <laughs> and behold, verse 20, you shall be dumb, not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because you believe not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. So verse 19 Gabriel speaks. And it's interesting, uh, you can tell he is not happy about Zacharias' words. <laughs> uh, you can tell he does not like unbelief. Let me, let me explain. When he, said, it, when he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God, uh, and I'm sent to speak to you to show you these glad tidings, when he said that, I don't believe he was mealy-mouthing here. What I mean by that, I don't believe he was... Uh, uh, speaking softly and trying to be sweet and kind and gentle. I don't believe that at all. I believe that when Zachariah said, ah, I don't think you're telling me the truth at all. I really don't believe you. I believe it came out something like this. I am Gabriel. God just sent me from his presence to tell you these things and they're supposed to make you glad, dude. Okay, I added the dude, but anyway. <laughs> so, so then Gabriel keeps going. He, he, he says, so behold, here's what's going to happen to you, buddy. You're not going to be able to speak. I'm going to make you dumbo bumbo. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that your lip is zipped. You're not going to have another word come out of your mouth because I can't afford what just came out of your mouth to keep coming out because God's word's got to be fulfilled. So I got to shut your mouth. Look what he says. He said, um, he said in verse 20, 
these things shall be performed. In other words, listen, what I just told you, God wants to come to pass and I can't have you stopping it. So I'm going to have to shut your mouth. Wow. Why did God have to shut his mouth? My words, God said, shall be fulfilled. And so look what he says. In verse 20, until the day that these things shall be formed, you're not going to be able to speak because now that Gabriel tells us why he had to shut his mouth, because you believe not. In other words, because you're in doubt, because you're not using faith, you're not believing God. You're not putting your trust and confidence in God. Here you are, been praying about it. And now God is answering your prayer and you're not going to believe him. Wow. And so why does God have to shut his mouth? We've been looking at it. Death and life are in the power or the hand of the what? Of the tongue. Speaking death or evil words, we found out, actually stops God's plan from coming to pass in your life. Whoa. That is powerful. That is mind-boggling, if you will. Man, I mean, he had to shut Zechariah... By letting Zechariah speak doubt and unbelief, if he would have continued to let him speak, he would have actually thwarted God's plan for his life and would have affected many other people's lives, which is usually the case because God has a plan for your life, but it's also to help and bless many other people's lives. Man. So let's go on. The time came, but, but I just wanted you to see the power of your words. God actually says, you speak evil words, you speak unbelief words, you're going to hand a future that you're not going to like and it's not going to, you're not going to like, and it's not going to be my plan. Wow. So the time comes for Elizabeth to give birth to John. Let's pick it up in verse 57. Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass and on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him uh, they called him Zacharias. So they, they, the other people, called uh, the little baby Zacharias after the name of his father. Verse 60, and his mother answered, not so, but he shall be called John. By the way, the name of, uh, if you look up the name John, it signifies the grace of Jehovah. So see, he was ushering in a new covenant, a new and better covenant. Wow, grace, the grace of Jehovah. Remember back in verse 13, the angel told Zacharias what to name the child. You shall call his name John, right? Uh, so let's pick it up in verse 61. They said to her, after she said his name's going to be John, they said, well, there's none of your kindred that's called by that name. And they made signs because they knew Zechariah couldn't speak. So they made signs uh, and... Um, Ask Zacharias in verse 62, so Zacharias, we, we don't believe your wife here, Elizabeth. What, what do you say he should be called? They're thinking he'll write down Zacharias, right? So verse 63, he asked for a writing tablet. So Zacharias asked for something to write on. They gave it to him and he wrote, his name is John. And what happened? Immediately, verse 64, immediately his mouth was open. So if when the angel said, I've got to close your mouth because you're going to speak unbelief, then by opening his mouth, God knew now he's going to speak faith. His name's going to be John and he's going to fulfill everything God said. In other words, I learned my lesson, <laughs> which is a good thing because if he kept speaking doubt and unbelief or evil words as we've seen God call him, then he would not have happy days as First Peter said. So let's contrast that because somebody said to me one time, well, what if, uh, I mean, why didn't God judge Mary the same way he judged Zacharias here? Uh, Mary doubted. The, no, no, Mary didn't doubt. Look, look, let's look at that because we'll contrast it real quick. Uh, verse 28, the angel came to her and said, Hail, you're highly favored. The Lord's with you. Blessed are you among women. This is the same chapter of Luke, Luke chapter 1. And when he saw him, she was troubled at the saying, cast in her mind, what? What kind of salutation is this? What kind of greeting is this? It didn't say that she got in fear. It said she was troubled in her mind. She thought, well, this is interesting. It doesn't say she got in fear like Zacharias. 
But the angel said, like Jesus every time he appeared to somebody, when angels appeared, Fear not, Mary, uh, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. Sounds very interesting to the Gabriel when he appeared to Zacharias. He's going to be great, called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God is going to give throne of His father David. He'll reign over the house of Jacob forever, and to His kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34, Then Mary said, Now watch what she said, how is this going to be seeing I don't know a man? In other words, seeing that I've never had sexual intercourse with anybody, how is this going to happen? Now see, you could think that's doubt, but, but by the response you can find out in the Scripture it's not. The angel said, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. The power of God is going to overshadow you. That, therefore, the holy thing that's going to be born of you is going to be from God. In other words, God's going to plant a seed. Instead of man planting a seed, God's going to plant a seed, which means there's going to be no curse in the seed. There's going to be no death in the seed. The death that was passed down from Adam's seed is not going to be in it. And so he shall be called the Son of God. Now, what was Mary's response? Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And what did the angel do? Shut her mouth? No. So that's when you, if you're going to contrast the two and see the difference between the two here, uh, it says the angel, look at verse 38, the angel departed. That tells me he was satisfied. That tells me that, of course, you know, the scripture tells us in Psalms that angels hearken to the uh, voice of God or voice of the word. So if you speak the word, angels hearken. If God speaks the word, angel hearken. But we know in both of these ca cases that uh, Gabriel came and spoke to Zacharias and then spoke to Mary and gave messages from God. So uh, they were hearkening to God's word. They were doing what God said. Uh, in Zacharias's case, he didn't believe it. And so he started speaking doubt and unbelief and the angel actually said, I, I, I can't let you keep talking because if you keep talking, you're going to thwart the plan of God. You're going to actually stop God's plan for your life. You're wanting a child. Now God's wanting to answer it, so it'll stop that if I keep letting you talk. And then John the Baptist is going to prepare a way for the Lord and so you're going to stop many other people from being blessed. That just to me is something to stop and say Selah, meditate on. Because we're talking about there is power in your mouth. People don't understand how powerful their words are. Words are containers that release power, either good or bad, in our lives. And we saw in the ten spies' lives, we, we looked at them and found out, sure enough, they didn't get to go in the promised land. And so... <laughs> They, uh, they handed themselves a bad future. But Joshua and Caleb, let's go up at once and possess her. We're well able. They handed themselves a good future. They got to go in and possess the land. Strong and healthy besides, by the way. And so Zacharias uh, had to have his mouth shut until he got to the point where, okay, you know what? This is long enough for me. I'm not going to doubt anymore. And when he said his name is John on a writing tablet, God opened his mouth. <laughs> he could start talking again. He learned his lesson. Mary, she, she questioned, so God, how are you going to do this? She wasn't questioning, are, uh, can you actually do this? She's, she's saying, how are you going to do it? Because I don't know a man, and so that's, that's, I think the way God made things work is I've got to have sexual relations with my husband before I have a child. And so God explains to her through the angel, well, God's going to overshadow you. God's going to plant the seed in you. And then she said, well then be it unto me according to your word. Now listen, you can't tell me she understood. You can't tell me with her little pea brain, just like you and me, could understand the big plan of God. You, what, whoa, whoa. she could have stopped right there and said, yeah, right. God is going to put a sperm, a seed in me. And then it's going to cause me to get pregnant. And then I'm going to have a child from God. Yeah, I'm going to actually be the mother of the Savior, the Messiah. Yeah, right. Come on. You can't tell me she had all that figured out. No way. Since it was faith in her heart, she believed. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, she believed. So she exercised faith without a full understanding in her head. And that's the, that's the key to faith is just 
What did God say? If God said it, that settles it right there. I'm believing it. God said it. Be it unto me according to the word. And the angel left. In other words, God's going to watch over his word and he's going to make sure it comes to pass because you are in faith. And when you're in faith, guess what's going to come out of your mouth? With the heart man believes. Remember Romans 10? With the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation unto your miracle, unto your healing, unto your blessing, unto your deliverance, unto your financial blessing, freedom, unto your wonderful marriage, unto confession is made unto. Man, I hope you're getting a hold of this because this is, uh, I, I know we've got to go at least one, maybe two more programs here, but um, this is powerful stuff, man. Get a hold of this. Your words are creating your future. So you, you need to understand there is power in your mouth. All right. We'll pick this up next program, but I just want to thank again my partners. Partners, you're actually helping us reach all the people that are watching right now that have not supported the program yet. Guess what? You're actually helping us get to them and help change their lives. It's one of the most unselfish things you could do. I love it when I think about my partnership with other ministries. My wife and I partner with other ministries and I think, you know, I'm actually helping other people hear them on their social media, on their television broadcasts and all that. So thank you partners. And if you're not a partner and we blessed you and you want to help us reach more people than become one, you'll be one of our power partners too. We love you. We call you blessed. Have a wonderful Jesus filled day. See you next time. Do you know yourself? Not the person the world says you are, but the saved Holy Spirit empowered believer that you really are in God's eyes. At times we all struggle with our identity, ability, and purpose in life, but God's Word is full of His descriptions of who we really are in Him. Listen to Dr. Hutton quote the Bible scriptures on who you are, what you have, and what you can do in Him. Build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do. To order in Him scriptures, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.